My lungs are not working and I can't even breathe properly. Kailash Mansarovar is the holiest pilgrimage for any Hindu. The place of intense spiritual vibrations and constant celestial activities on the earth. Kailas Mansarur is located in high Himalayan mountains in Tibet, China, which is known as a Dev Bhumi, meaning land of divine beings. Mount Kailash is the home of Lord Shiva. The root of Buddhism, Jainism, and Hinduism are all attached here. Lake Mansarovar is about 15,000 feet above sea level. Bathing in Mansarovar and drinking its water is believed by Hindus to cleanse all sins of many lifetimes and a chance to be received in Shivaloka after the death. It is also considered as a major Shakti pit. Mansarovar is the root of all four divine rivers Sindhu, Satlaj, Karnali and Brahmaputra. My journey did not start the way I thought it would. On the very first day, I fell sick. My lungs were totally collapsed. Breathing had become my first priority. But my inner soul was so tightly bonded with the, just the thought of seeing Lord Shiva's home, that thought drove me to start this spiritual divine journey, the ultimate journey of Kailash Mansarovar. Our first stop was Kathmandu, Nepal, and spent two days in hotel because of my ill health. But the eagerness to experience the Shakshatkar of Shiva made me continue my journey. Approaching uh, China, Tibet border, other side of the gate, the building you see is a China uh, immigration building in Tibet. So we're just crossing that border walking and then go into Tibet. It was eight hour journey, no problem. But eight hours of journey with constant bumpy mountain roads. And that even without a break, really a bone breaking start. Remember you said you want to go to the place where the, ma, the clouds are below you and you're above the clouds. Now you can see. After extreme ride, we crossed the border and entered the Tibet, China where we continued our journey in China's bus and luckily roads were very good. On the way to Mansarovar, I told my group for the first time in my life after taking the decision that I may reconsider and may go back. But few people came and gave me medicine and motivated me to keep me on this journey. They made me walk for two hours in the cold. Somehow I felt better. And our way to Saga, and this is in the middle of nowhere. Just stop by for a little break. And it's just no man's land. Nothing here except us. Mansarovar. Hi. Finally, it's beautiful, blessed.
fully working. We stayed in this small building with no heater and no bathroom. And enjoy this blissful, beautiful Mansarovar. So many celestial beings coming in and out from here constantly. You just have to pay attention. I woke up at 2.30 in the morning. It was very cold to sit there for a couple of hours in the middle of night. But guess what? I saw entire Milky Way galaxy from one end to another. Exactly the way you see through Hubble telescope at NASA. Next morning, I was very sick. And again, one Shiva Bhakt took me into the Lake Mansarovar and tells me to do full dubki, means go under the cold Mansarovar water three times. And guess what? I'm feeling much better after that. And my lungs worked better for that day. We also finished the puja and havan. After the lunch, we did full round of Mansarovar in the bus for three hours. Now I have to start the Kailash Parikrama. I have to circle around the Mount Kailash, home of Lord Shiva, for three days on the foot for 52 kilometers. That's Mount Kailash. It's the first darshan close up, you know. So we have stayed at this city, Darchin, the bottom of it. We went from Darchin to Yamadwara by car to begin my first day of Parikrama. Many people discouraged me due to my condition and I was also not sure if I will make it or not. From Yamadwara to Derapuk, I started walking for 11 kilometers at 16,000 feet height. Namaskar, Bhai Sahib. We are yatra kara rahe. Yatra bole naat kara rahe. I have a two long. I made it to 11 kilometer long first day of Parikrama in about six hours. I reached Derapuk. This travel was very tough for me as my lungs were compromised and oxygen level was very low. So every 10 to 20 steps, I had to sit to catch my breath. But somehow, with Shivji's blessings, I finished my first day of Parikrama. This right above my head is a first darshana close-up south face of Shivji. The Mount Kailash holds ultimate scriptural and spiritual importance. It is home of universe's father and mother, Shiva Parvati. From distance, it looks like a pyramid. And that is Kailash, a self-manifested Shivalinga. Kailash is surrounded by 16 small and big mountains, just like 16 lotus petals. And in the center, Mount Kailash is sitting as a Shiva. For thousands of years, Kailash is a place of meditation and transformation for many yogis, maharishis, tirthankaras, and tathagatas. The second day of Kailash Parikrama, which is the toughest day, as it is 22 kilometers long, taking around 11 hours. As first six kilometers is straight up at 30 to 45 degree slope, which is extremely brutal as you are climbing 3,000 plus feet on foot with my compromised lungs. So last night I prayed and prayed and prayed to Lord Shiva for his forgiveness. Also, I requested a local guide to arrange the horse for me for only the first six kilometers. But he said, it's not possible. I felt hopeless. But today morning, when I stepped out to just walk the first six kilometer trail for second day of Parikrama, and guess what? When Shivji takes away your lungs, but sends horse out of nowhere to push you up, unbelievable. Also, I was told not to tell anyone. They got me a horse only for first six kilometers. Rest of the 16 kilometers, I have to walk. It was the first sign of Shiva's final acceptance of I'm being received in his home. 
horse took me to the highest point, 19,000 feet, and dropped me there. This point is called Domala Pass. I'm at the Dolma Pass, 19,000 feet, but the most important part here, Kailash behind, is the Gauri Kund, right behind me, over there. This is where Parvati Ma take bath. So, I'm glad I made it. Thanks, Yuji. <laughs> impossible. I'm blessed enough to see and get very clear light blue water from Gavrikun, which is the holiest of the holiest water. It is very rare as it is only available for a few months a year. Otherwise, it is always covered with snow. It is the most blissful sighting to get the darshan of Gavrikun. My eyes were totally fixated on Gavrikund. I felt a divine motherly grace just came over me from Gavrikund. All of a sudden, I felt so empty and light. I felt like I can fly. And my blessed heart was pouring out of my eyes in total reverence that I could not stop the tearing of gratitude for several minutes and rest is the history as I was instantaneously healed. This is the beyond blessings. Now you see, we're going down from the highest point, just Delmara, something like that, Delmar Book uh, crossing. And I, you saw the Gabri Grund earlier. Now what you see in the back is the glaciers. I'm gonna go walk over the glacier to go to reach our destination. So, Dilmara Pass is all we just passed. The toughest journey of Parikrama, second day. Now we're gonna go down, uh, downhill quite a bit. Maybe 10, 20 miles. It's glacier. Uh, I see glacier, we are going to walk over this glacier to go our path. So, see you. Wish me luck. You can see where we are and where we came from. We came from so high almost 19,000 feet and we're still somewhere in the middle trying to climb down you can see people climbing down behind me you can see the stony mountain behind me we literally walked down this stony mountain there's no path or anything it was just it was just the mountain. Came down all the way. From there. All the way there. You can see people coming down so poorly. There's no path. Do you want to know? Do you want to know what is a devotion to Shiva? Look behind me. This is how they do it. Each step, full pasturing, 52 kilometers in this high, cold, dry terrain. And this is at least a nice straight path. But, and this is not a one person doing, the whole group behind me is doing it. It is, that is called devotion. That is called love for God. May God bless them.
Finally, we finished <coughs> our second day of Aparikrama. This was the strongest, hardest day, 22 kilometers, 6 kilometers steep high, 3 kilometers steep down, and then another 13 kilometer walking in the middle of the valley. And I finished that in 9 hours in this condition, which is beyond imagination. I begin the third day of Kailash Parikrama from Zutulpuk to Tarchin, about nine kilometers long, and two to three hours of walking in this beautiful valley with some high climbing slopes. We're almost finishing our last day of Yatra Parikrama of Kailash. So now you can see I'm sitting in the middle of this prayer ground where all these Tibetan people come and they create these shivalinga of uh, different stones and then put their offerings of these white cloths and they pray and they leave it here. So you can see I'm sitting in the middle of a prayer ground, highly spiritually vibrating place and this is the end of our journey of three day circling the Kailash uh, mountain, the Sh Shiva mountain, where the seat of Shiva, where the Shiva lives. And we are ending our journey here between this beautiful prayer ground with all these beautiful shivalings. And I pray for everyone. Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai. I traveled from Darjin to Shaga to Kriyayong to cross the Tibet-China border. After crossing the border, I got into the bus on a Nepal side to travel to Subrabashi Halipad. From there, we took the helicopter to reach Kathmandu, which is 25 minute ride. Finally, I checked into my hotel being extremely sick and God knows with what else. The Kailash. In ancient times, Saptarshis have done their tapa here. In Satya Yuga, Gaurdhattatre did his tapa and was blessed with Shivji's darshan. In Treta Yuga, Ravana, in Dwapar Yuga, Pandava, and in Kala Yuga, Lord Buddha did their tapascharya here in Kailash. This way, in all four yugas, Kailash is the place of utmost importance. All I can say, if you can, this is the must pilgrimage of lifetime for any Hindu. I will come here again and again as I'm unable to come out of this blissful, rapturous, and elated state of mind. This is deeply mystical and highly transformative journey of my life. <laughs>